The first full trailer for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer has been released alongside an IMAX version shown in theatres in front of James Cameron's Avatar The Way of Water and it gives us a fantastic new look at the auteur blockbuster filmmaker's latest feature. The new footage itself promises a visceral and tense cinematic experience with standout performances from Killian Murphy and the rest of the huge cast in the director's latest project. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my reaction and breakdown for the Oppenheimer trailer released online and the theatrical IMAX version, presenting my early thoughts on what we saw and what I think about Christopher Nolan's new World War II biopic. Before I get into it though, if you want to keep up to date on any of my content surrounding Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, then don't forget to support this video by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. But without further ado, let's dive into the new trailers for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. So the new trailers for Oppenheimer give us a great indication of the story, themes and what the different sequences in Christopher Nolan's latest film will contain. We had two trailers, one which has now released online and another shown before IMAX screenings of Avatar 2, giving us insights into what kind of narrative Nolan's latest picture will centre on. Both trailers shared new footage but there were some different things in each of them, with the IMAX version focusing more on a conversation between Killian Murphy and Matt Damon's characters, which counts down to the Trinity test. Before I get into the IMAX version though, starting with the online trailer, we got a good look in this one at the different stages in Oppenheimer's journey, whether it be his early life, his beginnings at Los Alamos Laboratory, or the development and build up to that previously mentioned Trinity test. We start with a long voiceover from Killian's character where he starts by saying, we imagine a future and our imaginings are horrifiers. The overlaid footage shows Oppenheimer looking at the rain on the window and we look at the water on the floor outside, becoming a somewhat stark contrast to the engulfing fire shots that fill the frame throughout. It's as if Nolan is playing with the elements yet showcasing both the power yet melancholy that take form within Oppenheimer's life at its different different stages. And one of those next stages is the Manhattan Project, a government research effort centred around the creation of nuclear weapons that took place from 1942 to 1946. He was the director of Los Alamos Laboratory where the bombs were physically assembled and alongside getting a brief look at the base in this new trailer, we do see images of the first bomb being assembled. Over the footage, Killian's Oppenheimer says, they won't fear it until they understand it, and they won't understand it until they've used it. This speaks to exactly the dilemma that was present in building the atomic weapon, as they had no choice but to make it because of the rising tensions of war and other powers potentially succeeding at pulling this off before them. But then when those bombs went off, there was no turning back from the horrors that had been loosed on the world. It's quite the heavy situation, and one that this trailer makes blindingly clear, not just through its powerful nuclear reaction visuals that flash on screen, but also through the guilt that we see on Killian Murphy's face in every frame. He says, Theory will only take you so far. I don't know if we can be trusted with such a weapon, but we have no choice. It looks like Nolan is going to put us right in the middle of the whole process, including all the experiments that he, the lab workers, and members of the government witness, but then also highlight the fear, grief, and emotion in Oppenheimer and others, both before and after the Trinity test. And in mentioning all those different stages of his life, I think this adds to what Nolan might be doing both with the colour and black and white footage in the film. All the footage in colour focuses on the building of the atomic bomb at the laboratory and his early life teachings at Berkeley University, but then there is only one piece of black and white footage which has Oppenheimer walking through a wave of press. In the IMAX trailer, it's the same thing, apart from an extra shot of Robert Downey Jr. in court at the end saying, and we all know what happened next. 
This is during the Atomic Energy Committee where Oppenheimer was investigated both politically and with his workings on the bomb and Robert's character ended up opposing him in those hearings. So it looks like Nolan is building this film around two primal sequences. One in colour with all the moments leading up to the Trinity test explosion and then intercutting that with black and white segments around the court hearings and the more psychological moments that followed surrounding Oppenheimer's life after the the nuclear test. Nolan did say in his Total Film article that he was returning a bit to the format of Memento with his use of black and white photography, so I think that's what we're seeing here when it comes to the narrative structure. And in my mention of the nuclear test, the end of this trailer and the IMAX one does focus a lot on that. We see the bomb being raised into position on the tower, while Josh Peck and Matt Damon's characters are on standby for launch, and Killian's Oppenheimer says, is anyone ever going to tell the truth about what's happening here? And with that, we get really brief flashes of the atomic bomb going off, which Nolan says was filmed without the use of CGI. And this brings us to the second trailer that was released in IMAX in front of Avatar The Way of Water. This trailer is apparently not getting released online and is remaining theatrical only, so if you do want to see that alternate version, then I'd recommend going to watch it before Avatar 2 in theatres. And may I say that this version of the trailer was actually incredible. It's a different tone to the online one because it focuses more on the characters not realising the problem they had created until after they had used it. The online trailer is more aimed at the scale and epic tone that the film is boasting, while the IMAX version has a much tenser format. From early shots of Oppenheimer climbing the bomb tower, to an intercut sequence of him speaking to Matt Damon's Leslie Groves about the chance of destroying the world, and the detonation countdown, it really conveys a heightened sense of fear. I particularly loved the visual of raging fire fading over the shot of Oppenheimer's close-up, and how the dialogue from Damon at the beginning makes it clear that they are not certain that this will all work. We do get more brief looks at some of the other characters too, ones which aren't present in the online trailer, such as Emily Blunt's Kitty Oppenheimer, as she and her husband drive towards the secret laboratory in which they developed the bomb at. And seeing the blitz of reaction visuals on an IMAX screen promises that this theatrical experience is going to be both an assault on the senses and the eyes. Overall, it's a trailer that you have to see to really feel and understand, and I would really recommend checking it out in IMAX while it's still playing. So what did I think of the full-length trailer and IMAX footage for Oppenheimer? Well, all the new footage looks great, and specifically, the IMAX trailer might be one of my favourite Nolan trailers in recent memory. I was particularly in love with the cinematography, the rising score, and the reaction visuals that were intercut throughout. You really get a sense of the racing against time to build the atom bomb, and then the foreshadowed guilt that Oppenheimer would face following those nuclear detonations in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The potential use of black and white IMAX photography during the down fall of Oppenheimer and all the committee hearings is something that I didn't expect to see, but now when I think about it, it makes complete sense when it comes to the tone and portrayal of this man's story. You have all the colour sequences that show the growth of Oppenheimer and the developing stages of the Manhattan Project, and then intercut within that, in typical Nolan fashion, is a narrative thread that takes place after and shows the struggles and political problems he faced. It reminded me of how Memento used black and white sequences mixed with colour to really get into the mindset of the central character. And I expect Nolan will be using these tools to convey something like that for Oppenheimer's story too. Not to mention that these black and white scenes have been filmed using newly developed IMAX cameras, so I'm sure it will look gorgeous on the big screen. It really had an authentic and rich look to it when I saw it in IMAX, and I think intercut throughout, it'll be a really interesting scene segment to add to the tension in the colour scenes. Also, just in the close-ups of Killian Murphy, we get a sense of the weight that must have been put on this person's shoulders, and it's like what Nolan said years ago about how, as a performer, Killian Murphy's piercing eyes do a lot of the character work just on their own. He really has a distinct look, and one that fits the appearance and depiction of the central character. 
Coupled with the gorgeous photography from Hoyt Van Hoy Temer, both in intimate and large-scale establishing shots, and we get a sense that there's no slowing down from Nolan when it comes to his focus on large-scale blockbuster filmmaking. I love the way both trailers all build up to the Trinity test, with the furious yet abstract scientific visuals that fill the frame, showing just how powerful the weapon that Oppenheimer created really is. Ludwig's score is unbelievably hype as well, making no Nolan's new film feel like it's going to be historically epic in terms of relating it to the biopic genre. I just can't wait to see how Nolan and the composer balance this sense of achieving the unachievable, but then also conveying a post sense of dread in what's happening too. The themes of Nolan's previous work in time, guilt and personal identity are all at the forefront again here, and based on this early footage, I can't think of a better story for Nolan to attach his cinematic style to. Overall, Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer looks like a film that is going to focus more on the historical story of the nuclear scientist in the midst of an epic scale biopic that only Nolan knows how to combine. I can't wait for it, and I expect that when the countdown in the original teaser hits zero, that we will get another classic Nolan film to obsess over. But that was my video discussing my thoughts and breaking down the official trailer and IMAX footage for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Overall, these new trailers gave us an epic new look at Nolan's film, displaying the tension and fear around Oppenheimer's development of the atomic bomb. It's looking like it's going to be another well-made Nolan picture, with superb performances and mind-bending visuals and physics. Combine that with the sonic building of Ludwig Göransson's score and stunning IMAX cinematography, and we are likely in for a big cinematic treat in 2023. But if you've already seen the trailer or the IMAX version of it in theatres, let me know down below in the comment section what you thought of the new look at Oppenheimer, alongside whether it gets you even more excited for Christopher Nolan's new film. For much more videos and news on Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.